But plants could not provide the level of general anesthesia required to make extensive pain-free surgery possible. In the good old days, patients weren't even allowed opium because pain was thought to be good for you. Pain was understood as an essential component in terms of surgery. So although surgeons were concerned um, about the effects of pain on patients in terms of bearability, in terms of keeping a patient alive during an operation, um, it was regarded as, as part of the package. A world where surgeons in frock coats committed acts of unspeakable horror would be changed by a dentist's chance discovery. But it was a breakthrough that was a long time coming. Throughout the 18th century, chemists had been experimenting with everything they could lay their hands on, from plants to rocks. They were particularly interested in creating gases. One of the gases they produced, they did by heating up ammonium nitrate. Now, this gas was said to be incredibly poisonous. So it's surprising that a young chemist called Humphrey Davy was so keen not just to collect it, but also inhale it. It's very hard, I think, to get back into the head of an 18th or 19th century chemist. Um, and that's partly because there was so much self-experimentation that went on. Now, gases, you inhaled them, and these, these, these airs, as they called, were at one point sort of regarded as possibly panaceas, solutions for big medical problems. And the way in which they tested them was on themselves. The young Humphrey Davy was desperate to make his name, which is probably why, despite the risks, he experimented with this new, potentially lethal gas. It was a foolhardy thing to do. I am doing it under carefully controlled conditions. Ooh, nothing yet. <laughs> yes, there is. OK. Uh, now, he records it in his diaries um, that um, he started off feeling sort of sleepy and splenic, but after a couple of ooh, blasts of it, he started to want to dance around the room. I oh, yes, I'm feeling it now. <laughs> Lightheaded. <laughs> yeah, I can see why they call it laughing gas. He also wrote other things about it in his notebooks, which I've entirely forgotten now. Uh, his notebooks, yes, he was writing something about it. Ooh, yes, there it goes. Now, one of the things that he noticed and then wrote about, not in his notebooks later, is its effects on um, pain that apparently it reduced it. Uh, ooh, yeah, that's actually all right. <laughs> Davy published his discovery that nitrous oxide relieved pain and even stated its potential in surgery. And yet, tragically, he did nothing more about it. For the next few decades, surgeons went on operating on fully conscious patients, and nitrous oxide was used mainly as a recreational drug for laughing gas parties. It was at one of these in America that a young dentist called Horace Wells came across the gas and saw how effective it was at dulling pain. Because his days were spent yanking out teeth, it made a deep impression. He was horrified by pain. And there was nothing new about that, that, that surgeons, often the most brilliant surgeons, were, were repulsed by what they had to do, that if you had to operate on someone, if you had to cut into them without anaesthetics, it was an awful thing. They would vomit with fear um, and revulsion prior to doing an operation. After experimenting, first on himself and then on some patients, Wells realised he had stumbled across something truly miraculous, a gas that could open the way to pain-free surgery. So he headed to Harvard Medical School in Boston to tell the elite surgeons what he had found. He invited a former partner of his, William Morton, who was also studying at the medical school, to accompany him and share his triumph. On a cold winter's night, in 1845, Wells and Morton appeared before a packed audience of doctors and medical students. Now, one of the medical students had a 
problem with his teeth, so he was summoned forward. He was given a good old blast of nitrous oxide from a bag that Wells had brought with him. And then Wells attempted to extract his painful tooth with a pair of pliers. No one's entirely clear what happened next, but the student made a noise. The audience interpreted that as a cry of pain. And soon there were hisses and cries of humbug, humbug, which was a deadly medical insult. Utterly humiliated, Morton and Wells packed their bags and they left. No one had imagined that anesthesia could exist. And I think that's why Wells failed in his demonstration of nitrous oxide, because they found the very idea that pain was optional, that pain could be deleted, erased from the world, so intrinsically fraudulent that they were predisposed to, to reach that conclusion. Wells was broken by this failure and would later commit suicide. But Morton had seen the commercial potential. His real motivation for trying to find a decent method of pain relief for dental work was actually sort of to find a way of expanding his business because by that stage, um, new technology produced sets of artificial teeth. So rather than just individual teeth, a patient could have a whole set fitted. But obviously, to have rotten stumps and roots extracted without pain relief was extremely painful, and a lot of patients did not stick it.